Greetings, we hope all is well. This is the Walking by Faith podcast hosted by Minister Larry Montgomery, Senior and Friends. Genesis 1-1, KJV, states, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And 2 Corinthians 5-7, KJV, states, For we walk by faith, not by sight. While Romans 10:17 KJV says, "So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God." Which brings us to Hosea 4:6 KJV that states, "My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge." Welcome to another episode of the Walking by Faith podcast. I am your host Minister Larry Montgomery, Sr. The sole purpose of this podcast is to present candid discussions about various words that are found in the Bible with an eye towards defining in the context of these troubled times along with clarity, insight, commentary and hopefully some revelation to interested listeners. This podcast is a presentation of the Montgomery Media Group. TV and can be found on most podcast platforms. Video presentations are available on YouTube, the African American Shopping Network channel. This show is sponsored by www.theauthorscorner.online. Please like us and follow us on Facebook. Hello again and God bless. This is the Walking by Faith podcast. I'm your host, Elder Dr. Larry Montgomery, Sr. This week's topic, home goings. That's home goings. Uh, Many people consider that a funeral. Uh, However, for Christians, it's a home going. Uh, When we finally leave this world, and return to the spiritual world. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. You ask yourself, why am I here? Because you came from one place, you're here for a visit, and you're going back home at some point in time. So I thought it appropriate that we talk about home going uh, for a couple of reasons. One reason would be that it's something that we don't much talk about, and so, we might not necessarily understand what's supposed to happen at a funeral service for a um, departing, departed uh, Christian. And secondly, to understand um, that not everybody who passes, that we are invited to attend a home going or funeral, really a funeral at this point, what is actually happened. We're going to talk about that just uh, in, in a minute or two. Um, in beginning this conversation, let me start by saying, in a Christian context, a home going refers to the belief that when a believer dies, they are returning home to be with the Lord in heaven. This perspective is deeply rooted in the Christian faith and offers comfort and hope to those who mourn the loss of a loved one. The term home going in relation to funerals is not explicitly found in the Bible, but it is deeply rooted in Christian beliefs and traditions. It reflects the idea that when a believer passes away, they are returning home to be with God in heaven. This concept is based on several biblical principles and verses. Let me go over those for you real quick. First, eternal life. The Bible teaches that believers have eternal life through faith in Jesus Christ. For example, John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have 
everlasting life. Let me read that last line again. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever, whosoever, believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Number two, being with the Lord, the Apostle Paul expresses a desire to be with Christ after death. In 2 Corinthians 5 and 8, he says, We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Number three, comfort and hope. The Bible provides comfort and hope for those who mourn, emphasizing that death is not the end, but a transition to a new life with God. Revelations 21 and 4 states, And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. A homegoing service, therefore, is a celebration of the decedent's return to their heavenly home, rather than a time of mourning their loss. It is a time to rejoice in the hope and promise of eternal life with God. So, as we talk about homegoing, let me take a quick break in order to pay the rent. Lynn <laughs> Sin, just released and now available on Amazon and at the author's corner online. Evil and Sin, a match made for an eternity in hell by Dr. Larry Montgomery Sr. This Christian believer resource presents a fact-based discourse on the existence of evil and its impact on sin. Dr. Montgomery outlines his theory on the origin of evil and the resulting outgrowth of sin based on biblical and modern-day facts and mankind's understandings of same, respectively. Montgomery's theory on evil and sin was taken from the Bible's book of Genesis chapter 2 verse 6 9 KJV. The reference made in verse 6, but there went up a mist from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. Troubled Montgomery as he realized that the mist spoken of in VS 6 might have represented that which was evil. Evil being for want of an exact description, a being or entity one could define as evil. That which was not created by God since he detest evil but an entity that is, because of God. That would explain why or how God's created man was contaminated and found to be susceptible to sinning. However, Montgomery explains that he theory does not address the question of how evil overtook the angel Lucifer in the midst of heaven which was its genesis into God's created universe. This theory is groundbreaking and worthy of consideration in understanding how important it is to live a godly lifestyle if one is interested in dwelling with God in eternity. While no one really knows the origin of evil nor the origin of God at best, we can only speculate Montgomery has articulated a theory that might bring mankind closer to understanding why evil can only be dealt with by God. Order your copy of Evil and Sin today. Available on Amazon and at the author's corner online. Thank you and God bless. So, now that we've made our effort to pay the rent, um, let me continue. Here are some key aspects of a Christian homegoing. First, celebration of life. Unlike traditional funerals that may be somber, homegoing services are often celebratory. They focus on honoring the life of the deceased, their faith, and the joy of reuniting with God. This celebration reflects the belief that death is not the end but a transition to eternal life with God. Secondly, biblical foundation. Homegoing services are deeply rooted in Christian beliefs, particularly the hope of eternal life and the comfort found in scriptures. Verses such as 2 Corinthians 5, 1 to 8, 
in John 14, 1 to 3 are often referenced to emphasize the promise of a heavenly home. Thirdly, music and worship, gospel music, hymns, and other spiritual songs play a significant role in homegoing services. The music is often lively, uplifting, and soulful, reflecting the joy of the deceased's transition to heaven. Number four, personal tributes, eulogies, personal reflections, and testimonies about the deceased's life and character are central to homegoing services. Family members, friends, and community leaders share stories and memories, often highlighting the person's faith, kindness, and impact on others. Number five, hope and comfort. The Christian perspective on death provides hope and comfort to the bereaved. The belief that the deceased is now in the presence of the Lord and free from earthly sufferings offers solace to those left behind. Finally, number six, cultural elements in some communities, particularly the African-American communities, ongoing services may include specific cultural traditions and practices. These can include wearing certain colors, special readings, or rituals that reflect the heritage and personal history of the deceased. Overall, a Christian homegoing is bending, blending grief with joy, tradition with faith, and the remembrance with the hope of reunion in the afterlife. Now, I have a short clip, I think it's about three minutes, whatever, that's going to set the stage for our conclusion. Imagine a grand hall filled with mourners dressed in black, their faces etched with sorrow. The air is thick with the weight of loss, and the silence is punctuated only by the occasional sob or whispered condolence. This is the final farewell for a wealthy man, Mr. John Harrison. His funeral is a lavish affair, reflecting the opulence he enjoyed in life. He had no wife, no children, but his legacy is undeniable. John was a solitary figure, a man who dedicated his life to his business and his wealth. John built an empire from the ground up, a self-made millionaire who donated generously to various charities. His philanthropy was well known, and many benefited from his generosity. As they lower his casket into the ground, the crowd reflects on a man whose life, while filled with material success, lacked the warmth of family and close companionship. The mourners ponder the true cost of his achievements. Now we move to a more intimate setting. The air is heavy with mixed emotions at the funeral of Mr. Robert Thompson. The atmosphere is charged with a complex blend of grief, relief, and unresolved feelings. Robert was a complicated man, a family man with three children who often saw the worst of him. His relationships were a tangled web of love and pain, leaving his family with conflicting memories. As the priest speaks, there's a sense of closure, a hope that Robert finds peace in the afterlife and that his family can heal and move forward. The words of the priest offer a balm to the wounds, a chance for the family to begin the process of healing. Finally, let's visit a small, humble church. The atmosphere is one of collective grief and hope as the community gathers to bid farewell to Pastor Thomas Jenkins. The small church is filled with people whose lives he touched, each one carrying a piece of his legacy in their hearts. Thomas was a man of faith, a guiding light to his congregation, and a devoted husband and father of five. His life was a testament to his beliefs, and his family was the cornerstone of his existence. The church is filled with heartfelt tributes from those whose lives he touched. Each eulogy is a testament to the profound impact he had on his community, a reflection of the love and respect he earned. Pastor Thomas will be remembered not just for his words, but for the love and guidance he provided to his family and community. His legacy is one of unwavering faith and selfless service, a beacon that will continue to shine. Three different lives, three different legacies, wealth, abuse, and devotion. 
Each story is a unique tapestry of human experience woven with threads of triumph and tragedy. Each of these men leaves behind a story, a lesson, a memory. Their lives serve as reminders of the diverse paths we walk and the varied impacts we leave behind. Thank you for joining me in this final farewell. As we reflect on these lives, may we find inspiration and understanding in their stories. The profound mystery behind Jesus' bloodline. Stop guessing and discover the truth in bloodline by Dr. Larry Montgomery, Sr. Bloodline by Dr. Larry Montgomery Sr. is a game changer. After years of casually reading the Bible, Dr. Montgomery was struck by a question. Why was Jesus born into mankind? Beyond the familiar story of sin and salvation, there lies a deeper mystery. God had countless ways to mend the broken relationship with humanity, but he chose the most remarkable path, sending his son into our world to live, suffer and die. The question then arose, how could the created create its creator? This intriguing question led to the insightful research and writing of Bloodline. Explore the profound implications of Jesus' lineage and uncover truths that will inspire and enlighten you. Available now on Amazon and at theauthorscorner.online. Order your copy today. Thanks and God bless. Well, those three videos or three clips within the one video about three men who just passed and they're at the home going for at least two of them. The question is to you, which type or basis is your eulogy going to be spoken on. No matter how much you've acquired while you're here on earth, you didn't bring anything with you when you came, and you're not going to take anything with you when you leave. If you're fortunate enough to leave a legacy for those behind you, great. If not, don't worry about it because God will take care of them. As he takes care of the birds and the bees, and the fish. So don't concern yourself with that. No matter how much you amass here, excuse me, for your time while you're here, doesn't really matter. The second story <clears throat> is about a gentleman who had a complex, a complicated life. There was some good, there was some bad. At the end of his life, people were still aware of the fact that there was good and there was bad. And so as you reflect from the standpoint of, well, it's easy to stand there at a funeral or homegoing and look down at the deceased caucus and realize that, oh, that was his life or her life. What are people going to say about your life, your time here, the people you interacted with? Were you a believer or were you not? If you were a believer, then God will deal with that when he talks to you. But if you weren't a believer, you're not going to have a very long conversation with God at the end. And the place where your soul will rest, if you call it rest, will not be an eternity with God. The final person, everybody can't be a pastor. That's okay. If it's not your calling, it's not your calling. If it is your calling and you're running from it, that's a whole different conversation. But if it's not your calling, you still have the opportunity to believe. And that should not deter you because you're not leading the church. You're just leading your life the way God would have you to lead it. What was said over the pastor's body were words of hope and encouragement that he left behind something that the people behind him could hold on to, memories 
of his faith, memories of how he conducted himself, memories of the joy of the time that he spent here with them. There was no conversation of the fact that they were an abusive person, that they were a felon, if you will, that they were mean and evil. None of that came up. None of that will come up if you live that kind of a life. However, it's your choice. You have free will. Now, in closing, I just want to point out just a couple of things. I'm not going to be before you long. And then we will have to look forward to next week's conversation. A Christian homegoing celebration is a traditional African-American funeral service that views death positively, celebrating the decedent's return to heaven, return to heaven. The events in Luke 7 relate to this concept in several ways. First, resurrection and eternal life. Jesus raising the widow's son from the dead symbolizes the Christian belief in eternal life and resurrection, which is a central theme in homegoing celebrations. Two, faith and compassion. The centurion's faith and Jesus' compassion towards the widow reflect the values celebrated in homegoing services where faith in God's promises and compassion for the bereaved are emphasized. Lastly, forgiveness and redemption, the story of the sinful woman anointing Jesus' feet underscores the themes of forgiveness and redemption, which are also celebrated in homegoing services as the deceased is believed to be forgiven and welcomed into heaven. By reflecting on these themes, believers can find comfort and hope in the promise of eternal life and the assurance of God's love and forgiveness. In closing, what is going to be said and thought at your home going? If you are a Christian, if you're not a Christian, at your funeral, what's going to be said and thought? is something that at this moment, since the next moment is not guaranteed to all of us, that you should take in consideration to consider Christ. No one can make you. You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. But from now on, you cannot say that you didn't know. And with that, I want to thank you and bless you. And I will talk to you again next week, God willing, in the Creek Don't Rise. Thanks be to God. You have been listening to another episode of the Walking by Faith podcast hosted by Minister Larry Montgomery senior and friends. Join us again next time as we continue to labor in this vineyard with an eye towards bringing the words of God to those who are interested. Remember, the sole purpose of this podcast is to present candid discussions about various words that are found in the Bible with an eye towards defining in the context of these troubled times along with clarity, insight, commentary and hopefully some revelation to interested listeners. This podcast is a presentation of the Montgomery Media Group. TV and can be found on most podcast platforms. Video presentations are available on YouTube, the African American Shopping Network channel. This show is sponsored by www. The Author's Corner. Online. Please like us and follow us on Facebook. May God continue to bless you and yours until next time. God bless.